Hello and uh, welcome one and all. In this session, we will create an ETL pipeline with PySpark. In this session, we will build on from the previous two. We will utilize the PySpark data frame API knowledge to extract data from a source, SQL Server, and load it to a destination database, Postgres. We will convert the ETL pipeline we have built with Python using Pandas to PySpark. And we will follow the similar design pattern as this tutorial. Apache Spark is a distributed platform for large data processing. The fundamental difference is that while a pandas data frame sits on one computer in one specific location, a Spark data frame can span hundreds of computers called nodes. The reason for putting the data on more than one computer should be intuitive. Either the data set is too large to fit on a single machine, or it would simply take too long to perform the computation on a single machine. Let's open up our notebooks and start with PySpark DataFrame API. As usual, at the top, we will import the required libraries. We set the Java home variable to Java install directory. Make sure you have Java installed on your machine and copy the directory path and save it into the variable. Next, we define Spark configuration details. I'll go through these quickly as we have covered this in the previous two sessions. One important note, we set the jar path location with the extra class path. In this location, we have jars for SQL Server and Postgres. After this, we initiate a Spark session. In order to connect to the database, we need credentials. I'll go ahead and pull these from environment variables, or we can define them within our notebook. Following this, we defined variables with server name, source and target databases. Spark also needs the driver class, so we define the driver class for the SQL Server and Postgres. Using these variables, we define databases JDBC URLs. So we have one URL for the source and one for the target database. When we connect to a database in Java, for example, in this case, we are using jars that are written in Java. Usually, we connect to the databases via a JDBC. Moving on, we get the table names that we want to extract data from, from the SQL Server's system schema. In this fashion, we test our connection, make sure we are able to connect to the database by executing this query against SQL Server. Here, we are using the ETL session we have created above and call the read function. We set the format for this as JDBC and set the options with the help of variables we have defined above. So here we are setting the driver, username, password, JDBC URL, and finally the SQL query. Now we call the load function and we save the results into a data frame called DFS. Once the data is loaded into a data frame, we call the show function to display the data in the DFS data frame. Now we want to retrieve all the values in the data frame. For this, we call the collect action. This is used to retrieve all the elements of a data set. It returns all records as a list of row. One caveat, make sure to use collect with a relatively small data set, otherwise you can run into an issue here. We loop through this list and get the table names. Okay, so this prints out our table names. We are going to use this method to query these tables to perform the extract operation. For the extract, we'll go ahead and define a function. Let's name it extract. We wrap the code in it in a try accept block to catch any exceptions that may occur. And here we are going to use the above query to get the table names into a data frame. And once in the data frame, we are going to save them in a list. Now we loop over this list and save the table names into a variable called tbl underscore name. In this loop, we call the read function. Only difference here is that we set an option for database table with db table and supply the table underscore name variable to it. We prefix the table name with a schema name, which is dbo. And we have a dot after the dbo, then the table name. 
we call the load function and save the results into a data frame called df. Following this, we make a call to another function that we will define next, and we are gonna call this load. We'll use this to persist data into Postgres database. This function takes two parameters. One is data frame, and the second one is table name. We have both of these handy. DF is the data frame, and tbl underscore name variable contains the table name. After the call, we print a success message if we don't encounter any errors. And if there are any errors, we capture them in the accept block. To persist data, let's define the load function. And this function takes two parameters, df and tbl. We will also wrap this in a try accept block. We define a variable to capture the number of rows that we are processing with the help of count function. And we print the number of rows along with the table name. This time around, we call the write function on the data frame with JDBC format. We set the database detail in the options such as JDBC URL, user, password, driver, and the table name. Now we call the save function on this to persist the data. We print a success message in the try block and capture errors, if any, in the accept block. One note, I am using Jupyter Notebook for interactive development, but we can easily port this script as a Python file. If you want to schedule this with Windows Scheduler or an orchestration tool like Airflow. Okay, let's call the extract function in the cell below. Before executing, I'll bring up pgadmin4 and expand our target database called AdventureWorks. At the moment, we do not have any tables. So let's go ahead and execute the cell to invoke this data pipeline. It grabs the table name from SQL Server, and for each table, we query the source database to extract data and save it into a data frame. Once the data is saved, we make a call to the load function, and the load function persists the data to Postgres database for each of these tables. Let's go ahead and refresh our target database, and we should have the new tables populated with data. We can query a table to make sure data is loaded and it is accurate. I'll go ahead and execute the query on screen. It prints out data in this table here. We can go ahead and execute the same query in the source database just to compare the records and the data. So there we have it, a PySpark program to extract and load data between databases. This script utilizes a distributed platform and we can leverage this to load large data set without worrying about the memory errors due to the size of the data. In the next session, we will bring our Pandas ETL pipeline to PySpark and we'll see how to run Pandas data frame on PySpark to get around any memory constraint that we can face on a single machine. This is all for now. Like, share, and subscribe. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video.